Leadership is something that some persons would believe that is learned. Some persons believe that it's innate. What we find is that persons may think of leadership in different ways and thus their actions cause different reactions within groups or communities that they operate in. Um, reading something from Maxwell uh, in his book, 21 Irretrievable Laws of Leadership, it's, it's noted that leadership is a part of your everyday fiber. It's your personal life, it's your professional life, um, and how you lead in those aspects of your life determines how effective your leadership is. So today with me, I have Catherine Goodall, strategist, brand, marketing guru, um, entrepreneur, life coach, and the list goes on. <laughs> And today we're going to talk about leadership within the creative community and how to lead your tribe creatively. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Yuan. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited about this conversation, actually. I am too. I've been pumped since the day you said yes. <laughs> I can't tell you no. So, so um, just give me a little bit about what it's like or what has it been like to actually lead creatives creatively because of course you have to find a unique balance point between getting the, the work done but of course creatives of course sometimes have yeah not stifling of, that creativity yeah, not without stifling the creativity how is that how is that done or how has that been for you um throughout your illustrious career illustrious well what a word <laughs> so i think having worked in so many industries for a lot of people that don't know i started in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and then i moved into well fashion and entertainment i should say mm -hmm. and then i moved into fast moving consumer goods so yeah. i've worked in many different industries um that are attached to creativity right and so i've I've had the privilege of building out my team in a lot of my situations, mm -hmm. um, which has been, I would say, a plus for me yeah. <laughs> um, because I was able to identify the skill sets that I wanted in right. my team. So despite what a lot of people think, I am not a creative person <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. <laughs> I think that I am good at connecting with people, I'm mm -hmm. good at understanding people's needs, and mm -hmm. I'm good at execution. Right. And so I always felt that I needed to surround myself with creatives, mm -hmm. people that, you know, had the vision to to think outside the box. Right. Um, because I am I'm not a, the type of person that, that likes to do what everybody else is doing. Right, right, right. Um, so I'm a risk taker, and I like to surround myself with risk takers. Mm -hmm. Um, how has it been managing them? So I have had a lot of people that dream really big. Right. And I always tell them to start with thinking outside the box. Think mm. outside of limitations. So think without financial restrictions. Think without space restrictions. And then we bring it, scale it down. Right. So you start with dreaming and thinking about anything you could possibly do and then we look at it from a realistic standpoint so okay how practical is this mm -hmm. if we were going to make it happen what kind of money would we need right. okay so maybe we can't fill an entire stadium right. <laughs> but we could start with a football field you know right. 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 um and and then you know scale it to fit the to find that balance right. as it relates to campaign management and mm -hmm. we're speaking specifically around marketing initiatives here mm -hmm. Um, you've been at the, the, the core of a lot of these major fast moving consumer good brands um, that persons may or may not have known <laughs> that you have been the pioneer behind um, and the leadership, leadership um, team behind how some of these things have come to consumers. We as consumers and, and using a consumer hat, mm -hmm. you get a product but you don't know what goes into actually getting this product in your hand yeah. um, and as a consumer we take that for granted because mm -hmm. there's this need for speed that 
at the snap of your fingers what you desire, what you want, you should be able to find it. Microwave generation. Yeah, <laughs> and if you can't find it, then uh, somebody's not doing their job or not doing their job properly. Yes. How has that um, been in terms of what was necessary to get some of these things going? Um, and not just get it going, but to consistently maintain it mm -hmm. while innovating at the same time. Because, of course, you can't give everybody the same thing the same way all the time so there needs to be that new turnkey then if you will Absolutely. what, what has those, those experiences been like oh wow so i've had the privilege of working with multinationals i've had the privilege of developing local local brands and it, it's so different mm -hmm. you know at two different total different ends of the spectrum but the one thing that was consistent is who am i targeting right who is it that I want to be my end consumer and how do I connect with them? I remember when I was at, do we call brands? <laughs> okay, so when, when I was at Pepsi, um, Pepsi has always been, for those of you that are not in Jamaica, market leader in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege of working there for a long time. And what we tried to do was think about how we could expand the base of Pepsi. Mm -hmm. So even though Pepsi was the number one cola in Jamaica, it wasn't the number one soda. Right. So how could we make Pepsi the number one flavor? Right. And so we created a smaller package size, mm -hmm. Bubbler, mm -hmm. that was more affordable. Mm -hmm. And you know, all the agencies came to us with these grand ideas of launching and screens everywhere mm -hmm. and half, you know, halfway tree, which is like Madison Square Gardens mm -hmm. in Jamaica. <laughs> and I was like, but that is limiting everybody mm -hmm. you know we, pepsi is something that everybody loves right. there is no um segmentation for people that love pepsi right. it's for the young and the um, young at heart right, right. <laughs> and so how do we reach them how do we connect with everybody and so it was the first mass market campaign that i had ever seen in jamaica mm -hmm. um we literally had teams at every stoplight at every major intersection island wide at the same time just giving away pepsi and then from that we got to launch a campaign but you know you thought about what were the different touch points so you want to connect with people in person then you want to connect them with a voice that's familiar that engages them that you know, creates a, a vibe and an environment for them that they can, and, a, and a jingle that they can sing along to, so it sticks, right? And so at the time, we thought of Busy. Right. But I didn't want Busy to be the face of the campaign because right. it was all about Pepsi. Right. And so we used his voice, but not his face, and it connected, you know? Yeah. And then, of course, you had all the activities that happened around it. So when I go to the supermarket, what am I experiencing? When I go to an event, what am I experiencing? You have to think about the total picture, right? So going now into being able to create a brand from scratch, the method is still the same. It is, what am I trying to deliver to the, con the end consumer? What's the experience that I want to give them? When they consume my product, what do I want them to feel? What do I want them to think? How am I going to connect them in a way that they're going to become loyal consumers and not just trial and error? Right. And so, you know, you start, like you said, with two flavors. Right. <laughs> and um, test the market, you engage them and you connect with them in that way. And you show them that there's quality behind the product that you're pushing. Mm. And so when you start to release the newer things now, right. it, it's an automatic reaction. Right. I have right. to try it, right. you know? And of course, over time, people are going to say, well, this is my favorite, mm -hmm. but this, they're still open to, to trying something that you're offering because you've set a standard of excellence right. that they come to know and trust. Right. Trust is always a factor that's important when you're creating your campaigns and you spoke to that in one of your blogs that you had written that, you know, when you're thinking about the products that we're launching, we have a responsibility to the customer and to the consumer just as much as we do to our business. Absolutely. And, and I think that you hit the, the nail right on the head because at the end of the day, the, the business would not function without the buying of the customer and the consumer. So they have to be your first thoughts at all times. Right. You mentioned two things that I want to want us to, to, to look at for a little bit. Um, experience and trust. Mm -hmm. And experience because I am big on experiential marketing mm -hmm. and what that means to the consumer. It's a new term mm -hmm. <laughs> in the space of marketing. 
and I think it's brand new to a lot of businesses and agencies or companies within Jamaica. So there's a gap. Mm -hmm. They may have an idea of what it is that they want to do, but I, th I still think that there's a gap where looking at how you make sure that the customer just doesn't feel like they're a part of a transaction. Mm -hmm. you know, how do I leave wherever I purchase your product feeling satisfied knowing that basically the brand is looking out for me. Mm -hmm. you, I'm giving you my money consistently. So there has to be something that is reciprocated, reciprocated. to show just the even slightest way of saying thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that thank you message is often missing from yeah. a lot of our campaigns, a lot of the things that we do. So we come up with the strategies, we come up with the brands, and then we sell. Mm -hmm. um, and we get the money, <laughs> and we get the business, and we get all this activity going, we measure it, we put it in our projections, we do our charts, and we say, yeah, boom, this went well. Mm -hmm. But what is the end result of that outside of the transaction? How do we then continue to leverage um, a conversation with the customer that then manifests into that trust that you're yeah. speaking of? Trusting that anything that this brand says and it's, fact. It. it's yeah. fact. I don't have to second guess it. Yeah. So if you put something on the label, I'm trusting you mm -hmm. that you are saying what is true and you are delivering a product that um, I will enjoy. So not because there has to be a change or there's some innovation. The fact is that I still enjoy it. Right. Is 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 paramount. So that's something that I think as as marketers, as um, brand managers, brand coordinators, businesses, whether large, small, medium, uh, we should definitely keep a focus on. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, the transition after working with you know the multinational and um, large corporations. Like, what has the the leadership been for you as? as you call yourself a non-creative, <laughs> but a leading creatives. Mm -hmm. um, what is that like within the space that you occupy now? Wow. Um, so the space that I occupy now, I would say is that of a consultant. Mm -hmm. I get the opportunity to work on different projects. And I want to just say to the point that you made a while ago, a lot of us think that when we take a job, it's a job yeah. and especially in the field of marketing I would challenge everybody to be mindful of the jobs that they're signing up for mm -hmm. because you have to also be sure that it aligns with your values Absolutely. and yeah. the products that you're going to be selling is aligned with who you are yeah. because authenticity is important right. you know and I it mean shows in your work. it shows in your work um, so in terms of the space that I'm in now it's it gives me the flexibility to choose the teams that I work with. It gives me the flexibility to pull on different people that I've encountered in the industry. Not just people that I've worked with, but people that I've you know, observed over time. And I think it's important for everybody to know that you never know who is paying attention to what you're doing. Yep. And so you have to always operate with a level of excellence. And so I think for me, it's a wonderful feeling because I'm not attached to any single brand. Right. And so I get to... I get to basically explore yeah. any any category of product that I want to, yeah. you know, and it's very freeing. Yeah. And that diversification is good. I think that's good. Um, Absolutely. It, 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 it allows your your thinking cap to go into new directions, completely explorative, as you had mentioned. Yeah. Because after a while, I think what a lot of creatives suffer from is the dreaded curse of monotony yeah like doing the same thing over and over yeah. and oh my god i want to do something else yeah so right now i have projects i have a project with an e-commerce company i have a project with another fast moving consumer good i have a project with cleaning products mm -hmm. uh, so it's like a totally diverse yeah. um world for me right now it's like you know the canvas is mine to paint so i'm right. very excited about it um <laughs> tell me a little bit about the challenges mm -hmm. that you have had and probably still currently have in leading dynamic teams to be creative, being true mm -hmm. to their work, yeah. um, being true to their self without compromise and also getting the best results 
from that? So I think a big part of leadership is understanding the personalities of your team. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that everybody receives information in, in a different way. Everybody um, communicates in a different way and receives critique or feedback in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the personalities of your team and how to communicate with your team members is very important in leadership. Mm -hmm. So getting to know the strengths of your team is important and also understanding the areas that they're not so strong in mm. and trying to compile a team where you have complementary strengths and weaknesses and so for me one of the things that I have been able to do is communicate with my team members at the level that I know connects with them so I have one of my team members who came to me and she said to me I want to sponsor this concert and I said I understand all the reasons that you want to do it, but it's a bad idea because the artist is too unpredictable. The artist is not really aligned with our brand. It, like, there's just too many things that could go wrong. Mm. And she was so passionate about it <laughs> that she came back to me and she says, no, I really want to do this. Yeah. And I said, okay, it's your brand. Mm -hmm. So I am going to allow you the opportunity to do it. And I realized at that point that you cannot, sometimes you have to allow them to make their own mistakes, sure. right? Sure. Because you're not always going to be there. And yeah. a big part of leadership is helping people to grow. And to learn. Exactly. Learn. And sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Right. <laughs> so I said, okay, fine. But the thing is, if I allow you to do what you want to do, I am going to stand behind you 100%. I'm mm. not one of those people that throws you under the bus and said, I told her not to do it. Right. So we went to the press launch and the artist got up while we're sitting in the front row, and he said, everybody know I don't drink so-and-so. Right. <laughs> so at that I point, your brand. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, I could see her facial expression, and I had to now keep my composure because all cameras were now turned to me. Right. And afterwards, I had to do all damage control, and I went to all the media houses and said, if you publish that, mm. we're going to have problems. <laughs> and then she came to me crying, of mm. course, and I was like, do not even worry about it. I'll take care of it. But yeah. now you understand why yeah. you need to listen. Yeah. But we, we made a decision already. So now we just need to make the most of it and maximize. Sure. Um, I have another team member who actually had a science background. Mm -hmm. No marketing experience whatsoever. But I hired her because she knew the product intimately. And she loved it. She was passionate about it. For me, you can teach somebody marketing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you can't teach them passion. And, right. you know, so... She came to the table, and for her, she's very scientific. So mm. her creativity was in a box. Okay. <laughs> but her execution skills were excellent. Right. Her, her organizational skills were excellent. And again, she loved the product, and she was passionate about the product. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you kind of, you, you have to create that, that environment for them to be open. Right. You know? And so you, you, what, one of the things that I, I tend to do is to ask questions mm -hmm. so that they can process the information in their minds right. and really think about it. I, I'm not in the business of feeding people information. I want you to think. I right. want you to develop your own opinions. I want you... It's your brand. Own it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't let me tell you what to do with your product. Right. right? I'm here to guide and I'm here to support. I'm not here to tell you what to do. So giving them the opportunity to leverage their own courage and yep. strengths while failing fast but failing early exactly right? because i'm always going to repeat that a big part of any and everything that persons do especially persons who are on the creative journey you're always going to fail at something mm -hmm. um important thing is to learn the important from it. thing is to learn from it yeah. and to learn how to manipulate and move on quick uh, quickly yeah manipulate the mistake and move on yeah and don't be afraid to ask for help exactly um and i think that's a big challenge too because we we tend to try and own mm -hmm. everything yeah like this, this is my I project i did this, this my <laughs> yeah. we don't let in anybody else to give a second opinion yeah like from a different perspective and what happens oftentimes is that when you do stumble up on a roadblock you're left alone yeah because you started to, that journey uh, all by yourself. Exactly. So when you reach way down the road, the person will be like, okay, well. What I think the problem is that in Jamaica, we have a culture of self. 
Yeah. And so collaboration is something that the younger generation is now starting to be open to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons that fortunately um, I've had the privilege of being the leader in my teams. And so I was able to foster that collaboration. Right. And so for me, if it's your brand, you're going to own it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even don't even look at me. Right? <laughs> it's yours. You own it. Right. I'm here again for support and guidance. Right. How do you um, help or administer that extra push when needed <laughs> because a lot of times the creative fuel runs out mm -hmm. and persons may feel that this is not for me it's not working or as we were talking about before the podcast what am i doing yes. <laughs> right um what are some of the things that you have probably um implemented mm -hmm. or you can advise to say look if this happens here is a yeah. quick fix to get yourself going based on just your experience. Yeah. So, again, I think it's important to understand your team. Mm. And you can tell when somebody's not having a good day. Yeah. Um, so, for me, one of the things that I implemented um, is, one, I would actually have lunch with my team at least once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are days that we would literally just check out in terms of we go outside of the office, find a new space and sit down and just brainstorm mm -hmm. not necessarily about anything but about everything right. you know and it really helps when you're a change of environment is important mm -hmm. um bringing in somebody else that's a, a new perspective also mm -hmm. is important mm -hmm. you know bringing in somebody that can either you know give expertise or give feedback from an objective standpoint that wasn't involved in what you're doing in the first place or just to encourage the team right. you know um so change of environment is i think important bringing in you know new influence is also important mm -hmm. and sometimes not doing anything a change of environment that is not work related at all at where time. you just take a time they take the time to breathe is also critical right. but it's important to do it as a team right. because it helps with you know camaraderie it helps with understanding each other's personality and it also develops that level of trust and comfort so the communication is more open right. And I think it's also important for leaders to understand that your team members have a personality outside of work as well. Right. And there are other things that are important to them right. outside of work. And what are some of those things that you can tap into to help trigger something else that, you know, would add value within this workspace? Right. So we are in the paradigm shift of mm -hmm. the technological um, revolution, as it's termed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, separate and apart from what's going on in the world right now, there are going to be new ways of doing things. Um, yeah. I think COVID has probably fast-tracked some of those things. But I think that in some ways, we already were on um, that trajectory to get some of these things done. It, it was almost going to become necessary. Inevitable, yeah. Inevitable where leadership is concerned and the creative space and in my view i think that creatives have the opportunity now to actually own a lot of things that happen mm -hmm. um and not just be a part of it but mm -hmm. actually outright own the way that yeah. this shift this execution this delivery this creation is done and uh, I think that there are there's an opportunity for a new way to lead as well. What are some of the thoughts that you may have around what does the new implementation look like? Look like? Uh, I don't like to say new way forward. Yes. <laughs> that so, words, but yeah. I think, you know, earlier you were talking about the way that we communicate and that trust factor that we communicate that that we establish as a brand and it's not just about the sale right. and i think that this now pushes us to really think about how that works mm -hmm. so we are obviously everybody's moving into a digital space right we're going to have a low touch economy because we're a lot more conscious now of everything that's happening around us and so I actually think it's easier now for us to connect and communicate with our consumers right at their fingertips. And the question is, how do we do that in a way that connects with them? And so, you know, I, I think we kind of need to go back to basics. 
you know, a lot of us create these campaigns and all of these, you know, different things. And it's like the more elaborate it is, it, and the more noise we make, is the better off right. we are. And I have never subscribed to that. Right. Um, I think we need to go back to what's the core of our brand. Right. Who am I as a brand? Right? right. Who am I speaking to? Who is my target audience? But what's my personality? What's the personality of my brand? And how am I communicating that to my consumers? Right. So, I mean, we really need to go back to the basics of thinking of our brands as people. Right. And really doing an assessment of what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, my personality as a brand is fun. It's engaging. It's, you know... Um, for family oriented, it's for everybody. I can, you know, have Sunday dinner with you or I can be with you at a beach party, right. whatever, whatever the case is. Who am I connecting with? And, and now we have the opportunity to connect on so many different platforms. So you get to talk to all those different groups of people right. specifically. Right. So if I'm talking to, you know, the fun and the lighthearted and the party, then Instagram will probably be my space. Right. You know, if I'm talking about the corporate side of my business and all the things that I'm doing to contribute to society or, if, you know, if it's recycling, if it's environment, if it is um, the business is investing in growth and development, then LinkedIn is probably my space. Right. You know, Facebook is a space that I can use to engage in so many different ways and so many different targeted demographics. Mm -hmm. so, so it's really now being able to dissect who we're communicating with, what we're communicating, and what it is that we're trying to communicate. But I actually think it's easier and more cost-effective. Mm -hmm. With the direction that we're moving in, it's just that we're going to have to get more creative because you want to be able to stand out Absolutely. among everybody else. Um, and within the, within the spaces as well, I think a new or not it's not new mm -hmm. we just need to as i said go back to basics fundamentals of niche marketing mm -hmm. if you will and understanding that not everything that we do or create has to be mass has to be mass yep and will be mass exactly um it, some of it just won't work for mass at all right okay. pick your audience and choose your market mm -hmm. and then allow the audience to gravitate to you exactly um and some instances you'll have a niche within a niche so how do you create the opportunity to lead within that niche space and leadership now comes from the work that you do yep. for persons to actually gravitate towards you, look at that as how do you even lead one? Yeah, and I think it's important to understand that consumers generally are looking for value. It's, yeah. not, it's no longer about necessarily what's the coolest thing, but right. it's how are you adding value to me? Right. And it could be taste, that's the value that you're adding, but, but nine times out of 10, I mean, you look at a company like Tom's. When Tom's came into the market, for me, it's one of the ugliest shoes I ever <laughs> see, right? But they, they stood the for message, something yeah. and it served a purpose. Right. I, you buy a pair of shoes from me and I will give yeah. a child that right. needs it a pair Somewhere of shoes. Right. Like, how do you be that? Exactly. Even if you don't want them, I have like four pairs upstairs just because of it. Right. And they're comfortable, I won't yeah. lie. <laughs> and so because I bought the first one and I actually tried it and it was comfortable and, and you were giving right. back, right. I ended up with four or five pairs, right. you know? Yeah. And so what's the value that you're adding to your consumer? I mean, the value proposition is so important now, especially when you're trying to communicate with the younger generation. Yeah. What you call them, Gen, Gen, Gen Z. Gen Z. <laughs> I mean, they're all about what's the environment. They're all about, you know, people and they're all about, you know, making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. How is your brand contributing to the things to that, that matter to them? Right. And so, you know, it, it, it really, I think, takes us back again to basics of just life. And it's not just about branding, but it's what are our values? Right. What's important to us? And how do you as a brand connect with that? Right. And that, that also um, affects the communication and the implementation of your messages. Absolutely. How that, how that translates to the audience that you're speaking to, whether it be Gen Z or otherwise. Exactly. You look at a lot of the major companies, especially in Jamaica, telecom, alcohol, they used to spend 
copious amounts of money on marketing mm -hmm. and it was just load right. you know it was just load Everywhere. and in your face right. and it served absolutely no purpose yeah. you build awareness and then, what? and then what you know and now in this time you realize how strategic they're being the ones that are spending money in just doing things that are engaging yeah. their their customers yeah. you know free concerts you know right. giving back to this right. you know um health awareness and right. things like that and i'm just like yeah well it's about time. exactly <laughs> you spe you're finally spending the time to actually listen to your consumer right. you're actually spending the time to connect with what they want and it's not just here i am this is what i'm doing yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly and expecting everybody to come and say exactly okay let me buy into it redefine mm -hmm. that's something that we are going to have to do yes but <laughs> that word has two meanings in your case. Tell me a little bit about redefine and what does it mean? What is it really? Well, this was a surprising question. Yeah, <laughs> so, redefine is a consultancy that I started with my girlfriend about a year and a half ago. And it was conceptualized from us realizing that there are so many small and medium sized businesses that have great ideas, have great products, and they just don't know what to do with them. Right. They don't know how, after they create the product, they don't know what the next steps are. They don't know how to run a business effectively. They don't know um, how to network, how to create a, a distribution, how to market their business. And so we thought that that was the perfect platform for us. Having sat on the Jamaica Manufacturers Association board and the Women's Entrepreneurial Network, I realized that there are so many needs and there is no one place that people can just reach out to mm -hmm. in order to get help. Right. And so Redefine was birthed. Okay. And so it's really to help people redefine their business. It's, it's also to help people create structure my, my partner is a chartered accountant, so she's all about structure and mm -hmm. processes. Right. And I am, I like, well, you know, a yeah. creative, as you say. <laughs> and so for me, it's just about getting it done. Right, right. So we are a perfect marriage, I right, think, right. to help um, small and medium-sized businesses really figure out their brand identity, figure out what the purpose of their business is and how to communicate that. Okay. And to create the structures and processes to go along with it. That's, that's great. That sounds amazing, actually. Thank you. Uh, wishing you all the best with that. For the purposes of our current economy, and if we can probably even look just a little wider to the, to the Caribbean, as you touched on with small and medium-sized businesses, how much of a role do you think that small and medium-sized businesses will play in the way things are done in terms of a transformation? Big companies play in their own space and uh, me personally I think that it's it's way more difficult to get them to change mm -hmm. or implement things or innovate or mm -hmm. pivot I think with the way th and, and COVID has unfortunately shown, shown that, that yeah. with the way the economy is set up um, global space what what role do you see small and medium-sized enterprises um, playing in the way that things are, are done so I think that MSMEs, that's the future. Yeah. That is how we're going to recover the economy in a faster way. That is how um, the economy is going to be able to grow and develop. Because like you said, you don't have the bureaucracy to mm -hmm. deal with. You, you have the flexibility and the mobility to respond in a faster way. I mean, yeah. of course, there are challenges, you know, some for capacity, some for um, structure. Yeah. But I realize that a lot of government agencies, a lot of seed companies, everybody now is looking towards the MSME sector mm -hmm. because of all of these reasons. And so they are willing to invest and inject in all of these things. I mean, for the last couple of weeks, I have been having meetings with every and anybody mm -hmm. to talk about exactly this. So you have companies like Jampro, which focuses on the development of business for export. Mm -hmm. You have companies like Exim Bank, like Carib Export, and then you have Caribbean Development Bank and a lot of other businesses. Um, and then you have funding agencies like Serena Williams has her foundation that's focused on MSMEs. And you realize that they have the ability, one, from a creative standpoint to, like you said, pivot at any time. They're more open because they obviously want their business to be successful. 
two, they're open to collaboration for the most part. And it really gives you an opportunity to develop industries where they didn't exist before. You know, you look at our agricultural business now and the farmers are now having to look at different ways to sell their product because the hospitality industry is right, dead right, right now. Right. And so you have all this produce. Well, what can I do with it? Right. Can I now go into agro-processing? Mm -hmm. Can I now start to dry my potatoes and right. make potato chips? Right. Can I now start to pickle, you know, breadfruit or something. Right. And so you have the opportunity now to create industries where they didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. And so it's also easier for exchange. So one of the projects that I'm working on now is an e-commerce platform purely for exports. Mm -hmm. And so it is literally facilitating the export of all Caribbean made products to the rest of the world. Yeah. And it's easy because you're not thinking about containers at a time and you're selling directly to a consumer. So it's, Yuan is in New York and he wants cheap his banana chips. Yeah. I can just order it and it's delivered to my door. Yeah. I don't have to wait until, I, I don't have to worry about going through a sub distributor. I don't have to worry about customers and clearance I don't have to worry about all these ridiculous taxes and fees that you know I have mm, to pay mm. and so it's easier to move with the smaller manufacturers than it is with the larger ones okay so we'll wrap here but I want to wrap with your closing thoughts on what leadership really means to you and of course how can you as a leader in different industries different sectors different spaces just give your your parting words of wisdom on effective leadership so i think it's pretty simple and i said it to somebody this morning when they asked me this same question um the golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated and i think that if we're guided by that it makes it easy for us to lead i think that we as leaders need to share wisdom we need to also be open to learning because you don't know everything. Mm -hmm. And um, if we treat people with the same regard that we want to be treated, it simplifies everything for us. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank I you for having me. There's so much excellent conversation and I am looking forward to seeing all of the wonderful work that you actually Thank get you. to do. Thank in you the so much. All right. <laughs> Thank you. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Blank Canvas. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, subscribe, comment, like, and share, and go out into the world, explore, and create.